or I would not support something like that. Um, I am a first-generation college person, just like Mr. Valensky is. Um, my parents did not have a college education. Um, my mother taught me and my four sisters how to read and write before we were four years old. And I was a single parent, and I taught, my son can attest to this, I taught him and his brother how to read and write before they even went to kindergarten. Um, preschool, I, my sister sent her kids to preschool. I did not send mine, and my kids graduated from college with no problem. And I just don't think it's necessary. If we're having a hard time funding what we have already, we don't need, need to add more debt to people and fund pre-K. I think that parents can take the responsibility and make it fun, like I did, and teach them to read and write. Mr. Feltus. Thank you very much. Um, not every child has the opportunity that Ms. Ian provided. And if we're serious about closing the opportunity gap between low-income families and upper-income families in this state that's growing, we need to provide those opportunities, more opportunities, including pre-K, talked about it earlier. So it's essential to closing the opportunity gap. It's essential to reducing special ed costs. It's essential for a variety of reasons, including, and I'll leave it at this, combating our opioid epidemic. Um, early childhood education and more investments in our children are shown to lead to better consequences, socioeconomic and substance misuse down the road. And right now, we have a substance misuse crisis in the state. One area where we haven't done enough, and hopefully we'll talk more about it tonight, uh, is helping our children. And uh, we need to get on the ball on that, and this is one way to do it. Um, let's, while we have the microphone there, let's ask Mr. Walensky, have you addressed 